For supercomputing activities in Russia, seven years ago we started a project, very important for us project. It's like top 500, it's top 50, the most powerful supercomputers. Uh, this is a joint project of Research Computer Center of Moscow State University and uh, Joint Supercomputer Center of Russian Academy of Sciences. In spite of the fact that the most powerful supercomputers are located in Moscow now, we may find supercomputers uh, all over the Russia, in almost all large cities from the west up to Siberia region. The most powerful supercomputer for today is definitely its Lomonosov supercomputer installed in Moscow State University uh, and manufactured, manufactured by leading Russian supercomputing company T-Platforms. Very impressive, very large, uh, very interesting project. Uh, we have never installed this large installation in our university. It has been developed in three stages. The first one, 2009. The first stage of the supercomputer was installed based on four-core Intel processor with a lever 420 uh, teraflops of peak performance. Of the on the next year, uh, we made an upgrade, but using six-core Intel processor and increased performance of our supercomputer after half petaflop. This year, we added a few additional computational racks, uh, but the decision was uh, very interesting. We added uh, eight computational racks ba uh, based on NVIDIA processor, but not Intel. Uh, this is a graphical processor. Quite a difficult decision, but, uh, you know, this is the right decision. And a little bit later, I tell, uh, I tell you about uh, why this is what uh, was the right decision. What we have now? We have this bit, uh, more than one petaflop of uh, peak performance uh, for our supercomputer, the supercomputer of Lamanosov. It based on quite different CPUs: four-core Intel processor, six-core Intel processor, and uh, NVIDIA graphical processor. What do we have now as a supercomputer system? We have a quite heterogeneous installation. You may choose between Intel processor and video processor. You may choose between Intel Xeon 6-core and 4-core uh, processor. You may choose different computational nodes with different amount of memory, from small to a large one. You may select uh, computational nodes with different amount of uh, hard disk drive, and so on and so on. Why, did, why we decided to do that? The main reason is that we have a huge amount of supercomputing application in Moscow State University, it's impossible to find a unique uh, one and the same uh, configuration of our uh, supercomputer uh, for all application. All applications are different with uh, different requirements to computational power of uh, computing node. Uh, this is a uh, demand from the large of amount of memory, which uh, different demands uh, for um, processor architecture. And that's what I said, that uh, this decision to compose this heterogeneous installation, I believe this is right. Just a few comments uh, to this picture. Now we have almost half a thousand different um, scientific team that use our supercomputer. And what is very interesting, only within Moscow State University, uh, more than 20 different faculties uh, are users of our supercomputers. That is why uh, I told you about the great diversity of supercomputing application. And these numbers are growing constantly, permanently. Yeah. Yeah, that was a quite uh, particular supercomputing application, but if you would like to think about Transpetaflop initiative, you need to. Uh, I would say redesign many algorithmic approaches, otherwise they would not be scalable and it, was, it uh, will not be possible to use very highly parallel uh, transmit of flop supercomputers. Uh, this is just one example. Why I uh, show exactly this example developed uh, in the Institute of Applied Mathematics Suppression Academy of Sciences. Uh, very sophisticated communications, communication structure. Uh, a thousand of time steps, uh, definitely uh, data exchange between these time steps, uh, very sophisticated structure and data, uh, data exchange within each time step, uh, time step. And 
reduction operation between each time step. Very sophisticated uh, communication structure. Nevertheless, uh, on Lomonosov supercomputer, this code shows excellent scalability. Uh, and this is a good example uh, of this redesign of algorithmic approach. In one month, I believe, uh, this team will produce a new, new version of the code, uh, and the scalability of this code will uh, increase in few orders. Very nice example. During these experiments, uh, we use hybrid model, MPI and OpenMP, and it was quite clear that this implementation, this parallel programming technique have a very lot of uh, restrictions, very severe restrictions. We need to think about new programming technology, scalable programming technology, if you would like to go in transcript of load era, transcript of load ages. One of the examples, this leap library, it is designed specially for data intensive application. This is very hard, this is a very difficult kind of application. Nevertheless, this is very effective. It is based on active messages, uh, on one-sided communication. And as an example, there is an implementation of uh, very famous now graph, graph 500 uh, code. As far as I remember, uh, the results uh, of this rating uh, will be available the day after tomorrow. We'll see what we'll get, so what kind of rating we will get uh, by means of our implementation, but I believe the results will be quite impressive. Very useful, very scalable uh, parallel programming technique, uh, which allow to, meet, uh, to make parallel programs very impressive, very brief, very complex, and very efficient. Uh, let's wait the date after tomorrow and we'll see what, kind, well, what place we'll get in, the, uh, in this race. Just, uh, just a few days ago, on the previous week, uh, our Ministry, Ministry of Education and Science of the Russian Federation announced a very interesting call for proposal, exactly within the topic of our uh, session, Transport of Love Initiative. Uh, here is the brief information about these contracts. The area uh, of, the pro uh, of the proposal, energy, nano and biotechnology, and uh, informatics. What you need to do, major requirements. Uh, you need to identify a component of the stack, of software stack, uh, which is very important in the future transport of lab technology. Then you need uh, to uh, exactly identify a problem that you would like to struggle with within uh, your project. Then, provide theoretical justification that your approach will work for these amounts of nodes, processor, cores, threads, and so on, and so on, and so on. And definitely provide results uh, just to uh, compute of computational experiments to prove that your approach will work. Uh, if you can do that, uh, you may get this quite uh, this support from our ministry. Another example. Uh, Today we talked uh, we talked a lot about uh, about modeling of brain simulation, a very important initiative of the National Research Kurchatov Institute, uh, which established a special institute, a scientific institute within this research computer center and big center. The idea is uh, to combine achievements of nano, biotechnology, informational technology and cognitive technology uh, to provide, to develop a new technology to, uh, for manufacturing hybrid devices. Uh, of why I'm talking about this institute within my presentation about transport of uh, initiatives, the reason is very simple. The significant part of this institute, institute is a supercomputer center that uh, requires petaflow facilities uh, to support all these kinds of research. Brain modeling is a very time-consuming, uh, computationally intensive problem, so this is a special institute for this uh, kind of research. Is it large or not? Just now, the staff of this institute is about 500 people and it is growing and growing and growing. Very important initiative. Uh, I believe uh, there will be very interesting results soon. Another one problem, critical problem, we need to think about it efficiently, efficiency of transport of lock system. Have you ever think about the total efficiency of any supercomputer center? Just imagine, you install 
For example, one petaflop hardware in your supercomputer center, what do you expect to get as an outcut, outcome? Very simple, one petaflop multiplies second, minute, hours, day, so you expect to get uh, 30 zeta flop per year. What you will get in practice? Very, very small fraction of percent. This is a lie, this is a practice. Uh, we have done a lot of research along with uh, a particular application in different fields and efficiency almost everywhere, extremely low, drug designed. Drug design, 3% of efficiency, climate modeling, 4% of efficiency, and what I would like to mention, this is only serial efficiency. I am not talking about parallel efficiency. This is really serial code. If you run it in parallel, we'll get this fraction of efficiency. Serious problem. Will situation be better in the future? I don't believe, no. We need to think about how to write our application efficiently. We need to make a special tool to present this low efficiency. We need to, um, to provide uh, users, uh, system administrators, managers, um, all necessary data just to make the right decision. What is important? We need not only to reveal the symptoms, we need to define, to detect, to show root causes of low, uh, of low efficiency. I don't know, just to know that the efficiency of my application is low, I would like to know why. This is very important. How to reach this goal? From my point of view, we need to move to, to a kind, to a special kind of monitoring environment that is tightly coupled with the modern operation system where hardware and soft, uh, software components is being monitored permanently at a certain degree. This is very important. At every moment we need to know everything about each application, about the uh, aggregated information for a user, for a system, for a, all components of software. Uh, just one example, very quick example. This is a data of monitoring from a small partition of Lomonosov supercomputer. And we may see this is user time. Uh, user time is extremely low. Uh, this is us. That's why I know that efficiently uh, using of this partition is very low. What is the reason? To understand the reason, there are a lot of applications there, there are a lot of users there. We need to analyze not only user time, we need to understand what happened with uh, interconnect, we need to understand uh, deep inside what happened within uh, different uh, processor. In general, we need to analyze all these kind of information to detect uh, real cause of low performance for an application for this, uh, ex uh, for this particular partition. Very sophisticated task, and yes, uh, we need to do it. Uh, it's impossible to do it by hand, uh, just watching on this picture. We need automatic tools uh, to make it on the fly or maybe in post-mortem mode. This is exactly the goal of the project that was started in this year. This is a joint project between uh, Russian Federation and the European Commission with the name HOPSA project, Holistic Performance System Analysis. And this project joined together, bring together uh, the very strong team from Russian Federation and uh, from the EU. I believe in the future, in the near, nearest future, we'll get uh, very impressive results concerning monitoring and uh, uh, measurement efficiency of supercomputing application and supercomputers as well. And education. Very important question itself, I mean education, but we need to talk about supercomputing education right now. Uh, why? I would like to make only one very small uh, remark. All our students will live in transmit of lob era. We need to talk about supercomputing education right now. That is why in December of 2008 we established a supercomputing consortium of Russian universities. Uh, it was established by four Russian universities, uh, Moscow State University, Nizhny Novgorod, Tomsk and South Ural University. And the main goal of this uh, consortium is supercomputing education. This is, uh, this is really, I mean, supercomputing education, very important question. 
our students must know what is mathematical foundation of parallel computers, what is parallel algorithm, how to compose parallel algorithms, how to compose uh, communication free parallel algorithms, what is parallel complexity of algorithm, and so on and so on and so on. That's why in 2009, president of Moscow State University, Akademishin Sadovnichi, proposed the idea of the project to Russian president Dmitry Medvedev, and the project was approved. This is very important for us. Uh, this project is scheduled for three years, 2010-2012, and so just to, just to feel the flavor of the project, scale of the project, I would like to show a few major indi indicators for, for this project. Uh, many, many universities should be involved in this supercomputing education. The new standards uh, of education, federal st standard of education, uh, must be accepted. A lot of students, uh, I would say, it's not students, it uh, would be, it will be a very high qualified specialist in supercomputing technology. A lot of books should be printed, uh, a lot of new courses should be introduced uh, in our Russian universities, and, and so on and so on. As a one result, uh, a special network of centers, supercomputer centers, should be established in uh, the federal district of Russia. And these centers are not conventional supercomputer centers with a lot of hardware. I would say it's rather centers of excellence, centers of expertise, centers, centers of knowledge. Five centers uh, was established in the last year in Tomsk, Chelyabinsk, Nizhny Novgorod, uh, Moscow, uh, and St. Petersburg. Three additional centers should be established this year. And definitely to connect present time and transport of law future. Uh, another one very important activity, transport of law activity in our uh, country, national system of youth school on supercomputing technology is established for schools at least every year in Moscow, St. Petersburg, Nizhny Novgorod, Tomsk. And this is very important since I told you supercomputing technology very important for education. For example, in one week after the conference, uh, International Supercomputing Conference in Hamburg, there will be a school at Moscow State University and the slogan of this school, development of super scalable application. Again, we need to think about our future in five years, in three years, in, time, in ten years. That's why we select exactly this direction for our uh, supercomputing school. Thank you very much for your attention. I would like, I would be happy to talk with you about transport of lab activities in Russia uh, during this conference uh, or in our booth 115. And welcome to our booth, I mean, uh, from Rus uh, Russian companies and universities, booth from Moscow State University, South Europe State University, T-Platforms and Aeroscar companies. Thank you very much. Thank you.